Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to have a look at questions 57 to 59 of the Green Book. Now, this is a question about um, hemiacetal formation. Um, and we've been given a couple of examples here. Here's a general formula for it that they've given us that I've copied out. It's worth having a look at and understanding and being able to recognise this structure in particular. Um, we've been given an example of it and then also the aldehyde and hemiacetal forms and what they might look like. I'll talk through this first because I think it's important to understand before we move on um, about where all the different carbons end up whenever you're moving from this form into this form. So the num they're numbered in the paper, but I think I'll just go over now. We can see that the first carbon atom, which would be this one here, ends up over here. And the sixth one, which is this bottom one, ends up up here. And so it ends up just sort of curling around from this straight line up like this, and then you end up with this oxygen connecting the two. So you're going from this linear version, this aldehyde form, into this hemiacetal form. Okay, so 57 says, which one of the following structures represents the hemiacetal that exists at equilibrium in a solution of propanol and ethanol, or ethanol, sorry. Um, okay, so this is question 57, and let's work out what the R groups would be, because we've got this general structure of an acetyl group here or of a hemiacetal group here. And so if we work out what the R groups are, we can work out what the actual structure would be. Given that we're working with propanol, we know that there's going to be three carbon atoms, um, two, three, and we're gonna have an OH group on the third one. Then we're gonna have an oxygen and the remainder of the carbon atoms from the alcohol that's given to us. So in this case, it's gonna be ethanol, which has two carbon atoms in it. So we can, say that we're going to have this sort of structure here. Um, and we could draw in all the hydrogens if it would make it any clearer, but this here already has got us to the answer of C. So the answer for 57 is going to be C. For this, I think it's worth just trying to work it out as opposed to um, just looking at them, because if you can work it out yourself and then compare that to your answer, if you've understood it properly, you'll get one of the answers. And I think that's probably just a quicker way of doing it. 58 says, which of the following pairs of compounds can be used to form the hemiacetal um, that's given here? And the difference between the one that we've just formed and the one they're asking us now is that there's an extra carbon atom on it. So if we used propanol to um, get it to be three carbons long, we'd have to use butanol to get it to be four carbons long. So we're looking for butanol on one side and then ethanol on the other. So again, this will be for 58, the answer is gonna be C. And then finally, we've got uh, 59, which says consider these three molecules and it, and it gives three molecules here. It says the hemiacetal structure is only found in which. So we've been given some information about what makes something hemiacetal and it says there are two functional groups needed, the hydroxyl group and the aldehyde group, and they have to be in the same molecule and this is what causes this internal addition that can cause these uh, sort of cyclic hemiacetals to exist. Now you have to remember that this in itself is a hemiacetal and it doesn't have to be cyclical. Um, so looking at the, the three we've got here, we've got um, number one, which wouldn't be able to form a hemiacetal structure, but two and three would be. Um, it might be worth, uh, if you can't see it yourself, drawing it out and then it might make it a little bit clearer. Um, but 2 and 3 would be able to, so 59 is going to be D. So that was a question about hemiacetals and the questions 57 to 59 of the Green Book. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.